Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. Today I'm at Games of Berkeley to talk to you about my top five recommended board games for expanding your collection. Generously brought to you today by BBO Poker Tables. Maybe you're looking to introduce your friends to something beyond the classics, because you've played Ticket to Ride and Catan with them, but you want to expand their horizons and increase your own board game collection in the process. Well, I have a list of my top five favorite board games that I think are a great way to expand your game collection outside of the beginner list that you find online. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to number five. Let's talk about my number five pick, Bargain Quest, where you and up to four people get to be shopkeepers in a fantasy land, prepping adventures for their mighty quest to save your village from a variety of monsters that are attacking you. But you don't really care if they come back or anything, you just wanna make the most profit and sell them the most goods. And I absolutely love this game for a lot of reasons. One, it has a very small rule book, meaning that you can very quickly learn it and teach it so it makes it really easy to like show to family members and everything who maybe aren't gamers or if you've got young family members in there as well who aren't big into like gaming yet this is perfect for them plus the art style is adorable and probably one of the things that put it on this list for me just because i love it so much there is a lot of diversity in the game between the characters what your shop can look like the types of weapons and everything that you can pick from as well as magic items and all this cool stuff plus there are expansions that are themed so you can even build out into other things in particular there is a pirate themed one which is really fun and goes super well with the fantasy theme of the overall game it just works wonderfully and it's a joy to look at and play so i would definitely recommend checking it out. Let's go ahead and talk about my number four pick, which is a little bit of a cheat because you see I'm choosing the Tiny Epic franchise. And the main reason I'm picking these games is because, well, there's a ton of them. They have a bunch of different mechanics and a bunch of different themings. As you can see, this is a pirate themed one. But as you can see behind me, there's galaxies. So you want space, you've got that, and you can get some Euro, mechanic, Euro mechanics out of it, worker placement a little bit. You want something where you've got some survival, you've got zombies, or you can try the defenders if you want something fully cooperative. Then you can try my particular favorite, which is the Tiny Epic Dinosaur series. I love this one because it was kind of what I used to introduce myself to worker placement and those types of mechanics and ease myself into it, which was great. And which is why I'm treating it as an expansion for building out your board game collection, because this is a great way to test out different mechanics, different themes with a variety of different people. And because they're all so small, you can travel with them super conveniently. You can bring them to your game nights with your friends. Now that things are opening back up, you can bring them to conventions to like hang out in the lines with and then play games while you're waiting to get into that super awesome critical role like RPG session or something like that. There's tons of places you can bring these games as well as tons of options for play. And I love that. I would really recommend checking out any of these tiny epics because there are just so many themes. You can find one that'll fit anybody. Guys, I am thrilled today to talk to you about BBO Poker Tables, in particular, the Cassidy you see here before you. And as you can see, it's a pretty awesome table for playing games on. It sits up to eight people, although I do think it'd be a little bit more comfortable with just four. It has spots for your drinks, so if you're wanting to get your drink on while you're playing, you definitely can. And it's even got these wonderful slots cut out that where you can put your tokens or cards, or, you know, if you want to have some snacks while you're playing, you could even possibly do that. But the main thing that I absolutely love about this table is this surface. You can get it in a velveteen or a speed cloth, which is the same material that you see on poker tables in places like Vegas or other casinos. And if you've ever been to one of those and you've played games on them, you know that picking up cards and tokens and all sorts of things is really, really nice. It comes off of the table super clean. No longer do you have to struggle when you're like on a plastic table where the tokens are sliding around or you just can't pick up the card for the life of you. That doesn't happen anymore. This surface makes it super, super easy to pick up. Plus rolling dice on it 
not as loud, they don't go as far, they're not going to fly off the table as much because they're not going to bounce as much, and that is wonderful when playing games. I've definitely had dice just fly off of tables before. No longer with this. And what's especially great is you can customize this surface. As you can see, I went ahead and got the Games of Berkeley logo printed on ours so that we can have some really cool just like photos and everything later on down the line. And we got it in purple, which is my favorite color. But you can get it in a variety of colors. You can even look through their pre-done designs and pick one of those out if you're not wanting to do something custom or you can just get it with a plain colored surface on it. It's really up to you. The table also comes in black or a white sort of gray color tone. I went with black because it fits my goth heart, as well as I figured it would fit the decor of the store a little bit better, but the white is actually really lovely. I think it could totally work in some places. I love this table. I can't wait to start playing more games on it because really what I've played so far has been a joy. If you guys are interested in this yourself, you can check out the affiliates link down in the description below, or you can scan the QR code on screen now. Now, let's go ahead and get back to today's video. My number three game is New York Zoo, which falls into the city building, or in this case, park building game like theme that I'm absolutely loving. Plus, if you've watched some of my other board game videos, you know I love spatial puzzles and placing tiles down, and this game has a whole bunch of that. But the thing that I like about it and the reason I recommend it to start building out your collection with is because of how easy it is to pick up, how quickly you can get playing with people, and how just pretty it is to look at. Capstone does a great job with making lovely pieces, picking beautiful illustrators, and just, I mean, the game looks gorgeous. I love especially the little animal meeples in this game. The white fox in particular is adorable, and I try to get as many of them into my zoo as possible. And normally this strategy tends to work for me, although it's not a strategy that's going to work for everybody because it's very specific and biased towards one animal, but Whenever I do it, I tend to crush the Chaos Cultists and win my games, so it's one that I always stick with. But the reason that I put this on the list, barring it being just super easy to learn, is because this is the game that I'm going to be taking home to my next family get-together. I've played a few games with my family now, and some of them, like, the games that I've played are like Machi Koro, other light dice and card games, and I really kind of want to expand them further into the hobby and show them other things that they can play, and this is a great one for that. I think they'll like it aesthetically. I think it's super easy to pick up and it's gonna be, I just think a lot of fun, especially they've got little kids now and I think it's going to be great for them when they start getting older and being able to play board games with us because I think this is gonna like speak to them really nicely. So it's just, it's a lovely game. I would definitely recommend checking it out. From cute, adorable animals at number three to dark, sadistic murder at number two with Whitehall Mysteries, where two to four players are, well, one of them, is a dark and sadistic murderer leaving body parts around London, and the other three are potentially detectives who will capture this man or woman who is murdering these people, but who knows, maybe the murderer will get away with it. I, as the murderer, have not gotten away with it yet, but I have enjoyed the experience immensely because, my goodness, is this hidden movement game wonderful. I have played about four times now. I've lost every single time, but I have learned so much. I have the strategizing in this game, trying to figure out the best way to maneuver around the board, which feels like kind of small at first, but then you're playing and you're like, wow, there are so many places I can go. There are so many ways for me to get caught or potentially for me to catch the villain if you're playing the detectives. I've mostly been playing the murderer. And I just love this because there's so much, there's such an, a stress level that I actually get from this game, which I know is weird. Normally you don't want stress while you're playing board games. We play board games to relax. But if you like social deductions, you might enjoy the stress that this causes because it's really the same kind. And that's one of the reasons I've been enjoying it so much because it gives me that sort of, you know, energy that a social deduction game might give me where I'm feeling tension, I'm trying to strategize, I'm trying to figure out what my opponent is doing so that I can outwit them. I love that. And it gives me that at a small scale without needing a huge group like most social deduction games do. And that is why it has made it to my number three or my number two spot on my list. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know about it down in the comments. 
If you haven't already and you're wanting more content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. And then if you want even more hobby goodness, make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at hobby underscore night. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the video. Let's talk about my number one pick, and that is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. And don't worry, this isn't the big $200 Gloomhaven. No, this is a $50 version that you can pick up at your friendly local game store, or you can actually find this at like Target and Barnes & Noble, which honestly blows my mind, the fact that this type of game is in a store like that. And I love seeing it, honestly, because I think everyone should play this game. It is a cooperative adventure game where you are basically going through as adventurers and it kind of gives you a little bit of a D&D experience, specifically the combat experience with a little bit of role playing elements, but it's very light. And I love the fact that you can get this kind of experience out of a board game these days. And one of the great things about it is it's kind of a legacy game. It gives you a little bit of a legacy narrative, which if you've been wanting to jump into that, perfect for it. You also get some miniatures, which is fantastic. So if you're into the hobby side and you want to paint something for your board games, this has some miniatures you can do that with. Plus the card system for all how you actually do combat and everything is top. I absolutely love it. It works super well. But the thing that actually like blows my mind about this game, the thing that actually makes me love it so much is the fact that the map system to actually lay out your game and actually go on your adventure with is all done through a like a, a ring bound like book, kind of like you see with calendars. And it, this is, it blows my mind, but it, it works so well. The map system in this game just is beautiful. It speeds up set up and tear down because you're no longer having to deal with a bunch of tiles. And if you guys have watched this channel, you know that I love Mansions of Madness. One of my criticisms of Mansions is the fact that you have to lay out a bunch of tiles. Now it works well for that particular game, but I don't like seeing it in these types of adventure games. And because Gloomhaven uses this book system and eliminates that, which is something that original Gloomhaven did use, it just, it's so good. I can't wait to see this particular style of map system implemented into other adventure games. And you'll see it in Frosthaven, which is a new game that's coming out from the same designers and publishers. And I can't wait for it to come out because it's going to be implementing the same system. And I just, I want to see it everywhere. I can't wait for Gloomhaven like OG to get the same book because they are going to be doing an update that's supposed to like basically change over all the tiles to being a book system. And I just, oh, it's so good. I would definitely, definitely recommend if you're into RPGs, if you like cooperative games, if you like miniatures and you want to try out Legacy, check out Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. I hope that you guys have enjoyed checking out these games with me because I love board games and I wanna see more people playing games and I tried to pick a variety of games to talk about that had a bunch of different themings and different mechanics and everything because I think there's something out there for everyone. I went with Bargain Quest because it was a drafting game with cards and adorable art. We went with an Uwe Rosenberg game, classic designer, love his stuff. If you love patchwork, New York Zoo is definitely gonna be right up your alley. It's got cute animals, it's got tile placement, it's wonderful. Then we had the Tiny Epics where we had a bunch of different themes and genres to play with as well as mechanics, which is one of the reasons I, like I said, I absolutely love them. And there's a bunch that I myself haven't tried out. So if you have tried any out that I've not listed, definitely let me know down in the comments which is your favorite because I've only played Dinosaurs, Tactics, and um, Actually, I haven't tried Quest yet, even though I own it. So I'm definitely gonna be checking that one out. But there's a bunch that I haven't picked up. So definitely let me know what you think is your favorite. Plus, then we had some murder and mystery and deduction with Whitehall, which I just like, it's so cool because it's got a lot of history to it. Um, it's got just, uh, I really love just the level of tension that ends up in this game. I know I talked a little bit about it while I was actually discussing the full game and everything, but I really, really do like it. And it's the one that I've actually been playing the most recently. Um, actually, it's literally the game that I played last. And so I just, it's really on my mind and I keep thinking about the game, which to me, 
that says volumes about a game being good. If you can't stop thinking about it, if you want to keep playing something, that probably means you should probably play it some more, maybe introduce it to your friends. And Whitehall is definitely there for me. And then, of course, there's Gloomhaven, which I know a lot of people know, but I really had to add it to this list because I just... I had to express how amazing Jaws of the Lion is just with the fact that it makes it so accessible to really anyone, let alone the fact that it's in just a bunch of different stores. It's so easy to pick up. The mechanic to learn it is super easy. I love the legacy format. If you've watched many of my videos, you know that I love that format and it just it does so much with it, and I really want to see the designers do a lot more with it. And I think they are. And I think they are also encouraging other people to explore that type of design and everything and these types of, like, components, honestly. Because a lot of these games all have wonderful components, and that is something that has changed throughout board gaming history. And it's just, it's awesome to see, and it's one of the reasons that I collect as much as I do, even though I don't always end up playing all the games that I own. Because honestly, some of them I just like for the art. Now, all of these I would definitely recommend playing because I think they're super easy to learn and everything. That was one of the big focuses as to why I picked a lot of them, is because of how easy they are to pick up. But they're also just beautiful, and I just, Personally, I'm a huge fan of collecting games for exactly that reason. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I will be seeing you all next time. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to BBO Poker Tables for sponsoring this episode and providing this wonderful table to Games of Berkeley so that people can play more games on it. And I want to also give a extra special thank out to my patrons as well for supporting us over there on Patreon. If you guys want to join them, you can Follow the link in the description below. Make sure to check out the affiliate link for the table down below so you can check it out and see if it's something that you might be wanting to get for yourself. But I've been Angela, you've been watching Hobby Night, and I will see you guys next time for another hobby video and, of course, some more Warhammer news. Bye, guys!